So who here loves stupid enemies? Yeah, that's right, nobody. So let's make our enemy a little smarter. In this video, we're gonna add a dodge state, which allows him to move away if the player's aggressive, but has a cooldown so the player can still run in for an attack afterwards. Let's get started. Hey everyone, if you're new to this Unity tutorial series, we're on a mission to make smarter enemies using a state machine. I invite you to check out the rest of the series, or if you're only interested in this topic, you can keep watching. As usual, likes and comments fuel this series, so if you want me to keep making videos, let me know. All right, let's get started. So first off, let's create our state. I'm gonna head into scripts and go into states. Here we can create a new C-sharp script. Let's call this one dodge state. All right, first thing we're gonna do, let's remove the start and update methods. I'm just gonna pop into one of our other states and borrow the constructor from there. Here we just wanna make sure that instead of charge state, it actually says dodge state. And we wanna make sure that this is coming from our enemy base state. At this point we can right click, go to quick actions, and let's generate our overrides. For now, I'm just gonna put start, exit, and logic update. All right, before we go any further, let's pop over to our enemy script and we're just going to add these states. I'll just put them down here. Let's put them below melee attack because they kind of come in and fit around the attack state. So make a public dodge state called dodge state. And we'll just in initialize that here in our awake. So dodge state will be equal to a new dodge state. And we'll pass along this script as well as, let's call this one dodge for animation. Now the first thing we'll want to do in our dodge state is actually make the enemy dodge. So let's head down to enter, as upon entering the state we want the enemy's rigid body to have its velocity set to a new vector too. For now I'm just going to set this at 2,1, which makes it go slightly more horizontally than it does upwards. For the x value we want to multiply this by a negative version of our enemy's facing direction. That way he's always sent backwards. And we're going to want to multiply this entire vector 2 by a dodge force, which we haven't created yet. Now obviously I don't like using magic numbers like this, and so let's head to our stats scriptable object, and we're going to just set some values here. I'm going to start by making a header called dodge state. Now we're just going to start by making a public vector 2 called dodge angle, so we can get rid of those magic numbers. We'll also make a public float called dodge force for how strong we want the force to be. While we're here, let's also set a public float for our dodge detect distance, which we'll use in a moment, and another public float for our dodge cooldown, which will just be the time between dodges where the player can actually attack. All right, let's apply those now. So for our x value, instead of doing a set number of two, let's grab our enemy stats dot dodge angle and specifically the x value. Then for our y, we can do the same thing, but with our dodge angle dot y. Now this dodge force will work, we just have to add enemy dot stats in front of it. All right, now upon entering the state, the enemy will in fact dodge backwards away from the player. For the moment, we can get rid of these other methods. Now our next step is going to be just telling the enemy when he should be dodging, and there's three times this could happen. It could be while he's charging us, it could be in the moment when he's first detected the player, or it could be while patrolling if, for example, the player dropped down from a platform or something. So let's just pop over into our enemy script and let's set up that detection so he actually knows when the player is acting aggressively toward him. We'll come down below check for player and create a new public bool called check if should dodge. This will be very similar to our check for player method, except that we'll want him to only dodge if the player gets quite close and also if the player is acting aggressively toward him. So let's start by checking for the player. We'll make a raycast hit 2D called hit player. This will just be a physics 2D raycast that originates from our ledge detector's position in the direction we're facing. So if our facing direction is one, we'll cast to the right. And if it's negative one, we'll cast to the left. Then we'll look at our stats scriptable object to see how far we want to detect. And we just want to make sure we're looking for something on the player layer. This will tell us whether the player is within a dodge distance. Now at this point though, if we just left it like this while charging the player, the enemy would actually jump away from the player instead of attacking him. We actually only want the enemy to dodge if the player makes a move toward him. So to figure that out, we'll just make a bool called aggressive player. And this will be true if the enemy's facing direction is greater than zero, meaning he's facing right and the player is moving left. Now for me, I'm using the input system in Unity, so if the input get axis horizontal is less than zero, that means that I'm moving left. So the enemy's facing right and I'm moving toward him. 
we'll also have to put in the opposite possibility, which is that the enemy is facing left, so his face dire facing direction is less than zero, and that my input for the player is greater than zero, again, meaning that I am moving towards him while he's facing me. So now we just want to check. If the enemy is detecting the player within dodge distance and the player is acting aggressively, meaning moving towards him, then we're going to return true. It is time to dodge. Otherwise, we'll return false. I said before there's three states that could send the player into a dodge. Let's head to charge, which is the first one. At the moment, there's just two things that cause the enemy to leave charge state. The first is if his time for charging runs out, and the second is if he gets close enough to attack the player. All right, now if the enemy's time has not run out, we want to prioritize checking for the player as a melee target, which is his attack state. However, if that isn't true and it is time to dodge, then we want to switch states to the enemy dot dodge state. I'm just going to copy those two lines there. So it's also possible that the enemy could need to dodge the player from its patrol state. This would not normally happen, as usually the enemy would enter into a charge state before the player got close enough for him to need to dodge. However, say the player drops down from a platform and is suddenly within range. Then we want the enemy to dodge. So we're going to prioritize this dodge even more than attacking. So let's just come up above checking for player and paste in our else if statement. We'll actually turn it to an if statement so that the highest priority is that if the player is in close range, the enemy will dodge. We'll then turn this check for player into an else if statement. And actually, let's do the same for check for obstacles as we only need to check those two statements if the other one is false. Finally, let's head to our player detected state. This is what happens when the enemy first detects the player, where he gives a brief telegraph that he's about to start charging. However, if while he's in that state, the player is suddenly acting aggressively towards him, let's make him dodge. So again, we'll prioritize this above checking for the player and just paste it in at the top. We'll change it back to an if statement, make this other statement an else if. All right, let's save all of these scripts and head back to Unity. Now, part of the beauty of the state machine is that there's very little to set up in Unity. What we do just need to do, though, is to click on our CRT robot and go to his stat scriptable object. Here we need to set our dodge angle. I'm going to set mine at 2 on the X, 1 on the Y, so he moves more horizontally than vertically. We'll start with a dodge force of 5. I'm going to make the detect distance just one unit. And finally, for the cooldown, let's try out two seconds. I'll warn you, this test won't be pretty, but it'll give us an idea where we're at. Now, as the enemy's coming towards me, if I run at him aggressively, he does in fact jump backwards, but clearly that's not how we want our dodge to work. All right, so at this point we have sort of three problems. One is that he never actually leaves this state, and so he will only ever dodge once. The other is that we have a dodge move that is too floaty and sends him too far. And lastly, the cooldown is not actually taking place. So let's begin by having a state exit based on our cooldown. So I lied to you earlier when I said we only needed the enter method. Let's right click on dodge state, go to quick actions, and we're just going to add the logic update override. What we just want to do here is check to see if time.time .time is greater than enemy.state time. Remember that's a float that keeps track of the time when we enter this state, plus our enemy stats dodge cooldown. So in our case, after two seconds. If that is true, then we want our enemy to switch state to the enemy patrol state. However, we want to get a little more nuanced than that. Let's make it so that after he finishes his cooldown, he checks first of all for the player, and if the player is actually in charge range, then we want to show that we've detected him. If, however, the player is no longer within charge range, we can just go back to our patrol state. Next, we want to take care of that floaty, lame-looking dodge effect. What we're going to do is make it so that after a short amount of time has passed, once the enemy is airborne, we apply a downward force that will just cause him to have a nice snappy descent down to the ground. Now to make that happen, let's just head down to the bottom here and create a private void called end dodge. And in here, we're just going to make our enemy's rigid body's velocity set to a new value. Now we can create the angle of the downward force. I'll put a 0.1 on the x-axis, which will mostly halt his horizontal movement, keeping him from flying off platforms and things, and a purely downward negative 1 force on the y. We'll multiply both of these values times end dodge force so that we can adjust just how powerfully we want to send him down. Finally, we want to make sure that our x-axis is multiplied by a negative enemy facing direction so that he's always sent backwards when he's dodging. 
Next, let's just grab that end dodge force. We can paste that up top here and turn it into a private float. For now, let's just initialize that at five. Now we just need to activate this downward force. So let's head down below our regular timer for the cooldown and just do an else if statement. So if the dodge is actually still happening and time.time .time is greater than, now for this we'll have to create a variable. So let's head up top where we can make a private float called end dodge time. We want to initialize this to a small number. I'll try 0.2 for now. So if time.time .time is greater than our state entry time plus our end dodge time. So essentially if 0.2 seconds have passed since the dodge started, then we'll call end dodge. So we're almost done here now, except that at the moment, once our end dodge time is up, it will just continuously trigger end dodge, which is not at all what we want to happen. So we're just going to come up top and make a private bool dodge ended, which will just be our flag to make sure that this only fires once. So we'll head into end dodge and just make sure that after we've triggered that downward force, we make dodge ended equals true. And then in our else if statement, add not at dodge ended as a, another condition. So now after 0.2 seconds, if the dodge has not yet ended, we'll call end dodge and it should only fire once. We also want to make sure that when we enter the state, dodge ended is set to false so that each time we enter the state, it can happen. At this point, things will be mostly working. The enemy does in fact have a slight dodge effect when we move right at him. And if he is in the charge mode specifically, though things don't work quite right. It's just a little tiny bump. However, if we get him while he's in player detected, he does the full dodge. So we're getting close. Our cooldown's also working, which is good. We've just got a couple of little tweaks left to do. So the problem we're encountering now is deeply annoying, and simply it's just that when he's charging, he already has a velocity, and we need to stop that before we can apply a velocity in the opposite direction. So to do this, we're gonna do very similar to the way we apply our downward force, and we're gonna stop the enemy. So in our enter method, we're just going to start by making our enemy's rigid body velocity equal to vector2.0. This will halt him in his tracks as soon as he enters the state. Next, we'll just cut out the line where we originally applied our dodge force, and we're going to head down and create a new private void method called start dodge, and we can paste our dodge movement inside of here. In our logic update, we're just going to check to see if time.time .time is greater than our start our enemy state time plus 0 0.05, we just need a very small number here. And at that point, we can start the dodge. Finally, we just need to make sure that the dodge only starts once. So we'll make a private bool called dodge started. On entering the method, we'll make sure that dodge started is in fact false so that it can happen. We'll make sure to add this as another condition of starting the dodge so that after a very short time, if the dodge has not already started, we start the dodge. And finally, after applying our dodge force, make dodge started equal true. Make sure to save that, and at last, we should have a nice working dodge. Now before we test that, I've just taken my dodge force down to 8 and reduced my dodge cooldown to 1 second, as 2 seconds just felt too long. So now, whenever we charge the enemy, regardless of if he's already charging or if he's just in his player detected state, he does in fact dodge the same. Additionally, he has a one second cooldown in which the player can run in for an attack. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. If you have, please leave me a comment, hit like, or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, it's Matt here with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.